Welcome back to the Sandpond Saga. Now, in the Sandpond engine, most stuff falls down. This seemed quite simple to implement at first, but I've started to realise that there are lots of different ways to do it. Today, let's look at nine different ways to make gravity in the Sandpond engine, from the simplest to the strangest. Let's start with DIY. We'll make the atoms do their own gravity. This sand moves down to the ground all by itself. It's a DIY approach. But do we really trust sand to do its own gravity? Field. Let's make the sand do nothing. It just stays where it is. Instead, let's fill up all empty space with a field of gravity. And let's make it transparent so that we can see inside. Every atom in the field tries to push down any nearby sand. It works extremely quickly because there's so many atoms working together. But is this overkill? Gravitons. Instead of filling up all empty space, let's make gravity atoms fill up around 10% of the air. This is inspired by the dreg element from the T2 tile project with a few differences. Each graviton has a 10% chance to copy themselves whenever they find an empty space. If they bump into another graviton, they delete it. This means that they give their best effort at maintaining a 10% consistency. But do we really want these gravitons flying all over the place? Rays. Instead of letting gravitons fly wherever they want, let's just shoot them up from the floor. Whenever they pass through sand, they pull it down slightly. Bit by bit, they move the sand to the floor. But could we use something more elegant? Waves. Instead of firing individual atoms, let's release giant waves of connected gravitons. This is inspired by swap lines from the T2 tile project. Every atom looks to the sides to see if it needs to wait for the rest of the line to catch up. If everything has caught up, it advances. Bit by bit, the waves ripple sand down to the ground. But do we have everything upside down? Down. Instead of firing rays and waves upwards, let's shoot them down. They push down any sand atoms they find along the way. By doing this, they end up leaving small gaps in between layers of sand. To get rid of these gaps, we can make them carry the sand atoms inside their data and drop them off later. But what if we can't decide between up and down? Bounce. Let's make the rays and waves bounce up and down repeatedly. We're not firing them continually anymore. There is a fixed amount in the universe. On the way up, they pull down any sand that passes through. On the way down, they push down any sand that they come across. But do we really need so many gravitons? Boss. Let's just have one singular graviton that patrols around every single point in space. Whenever it passes through a sand atom, it applies gravity to it. It's the big CEO of gravity and tells everyone else what to do. It's quite slow. But what if we want to be even slower? Printer. Let's have the graviton scan the whole universe, recording the position of every particle of sand. It calculates what the universe should look like one frame later, and then 
redraws it in that image. This almost forces the asynchronous engine to work like a normal synchronous one, which would be a very strange thing to do indeed. But what do you think? What's your favourite type of gravity? And can you think of any other strange ways of making it? I hope you enjoyed seeing all my ideas and thank you very much for joining. I really appreciate it and hopefully I'll see you next time.